<clears throat> Your Honor, my name is Terry Anderson. Thank you for letting me do this. Nikki was my daughter, my life, my world, my support. She was my everything. This beautiful young lady had a very loving family and many, many friends. This was so devastating to everyone in her life. I cannot begin to explain the feeling I had when I got that call. Uh, my life had changed forever from that moment on. She's gone, and nothing will bring my baby back. Your Honor, Michael Carpenter destroyed my daughter's life and everyone close to her. As her mother, he will never know nor care what I have been going through these last two years. He needs to pay for what he has done. The smiles and smirks throughout the hearings that I have witnessed were pathetic. Let's see how much he will be smiling when he spends the rest of his life behind those walls where we will be on the outside missing our beautiful young woman, my girl. And this is all I have left. Thank you. Your next statement, Counselor. Your Honor, the next victim family member who will be speaking is the victim's cousin, and he has consented to audio and visual recording. Your Honor, thank you for allowing me the chance to speak today. Nikki wasn't my youngest cousin. Although he had an age gap of over 25 years, she was still my cousin and I loved her, just like everyone behind me loved her. She was a ray of sunshine to her family and friends, and she did not deserve her life to be ended in such a horrific and cold-hearted manner. My only hope for this murderer is that as he is haunted by the images of the crime scene and autopsy photos, as those of us who saw them are. And for the ones who cannot bear to witness these as their fear that would make it worse, I hope he finds no peace or salvation, even when or if he asks for it. As I assure you, no one in this family will ever find absolute peace. In closing, I find the loss of Nikki's life senseless. And the full brunt of the blame falls directly on this murderer's shoulders and those that neglected to teach him right from wrong, no means no, and did not get him the psychiatric help that he obviously needed. Thank you again, Your Honor, for letting me speak today. Could you state your name for the record before you leave, sir? Kenneth Wooch. Thank you. Thank you. Your next statement, then, Ms. Eldridge. Your Honor, the next victim's family member who will speak is the victim's aunt, and she has consented to audio recording, but has objected to visual recording. The nature and circumstances of this case are egregious. The defendant deliberated about, planned, and prepared for the killing of Nicole Hammond, his co-worker and his friend someone he had communicated with regularly, someone he text messaged repeatedly, someone he spent time with outside of work, someone whose home he had stayed at, someone he developed strong feelings for, feelings that he had searched about online, someone he looked up on social media every day, someone who consumed his thoughts, and someone who he became infatuated with. They developed a friendship over the summer of 2022, but that friendship soured after the defendant expressed deeper feelings for Nicole Hammond. Whatever those feelings were, they were not reciprocated. And on October 23rd of 2022, in a text message exchange, Nicole Hammond set boundaries and asked not to be touched by the defendant anymore. The defendant stewed about it overnight 
And early the next morning on October 24th of 2022, he drove to work where he knew she would be. And he waited for her in the parking lot at Dubois. She got to work and parked her car and started her day like any other work day. But that day did not turn out like any other day for Nicole Hammond. As she got out of the car that morning, the defendant walked up to her with his nine millimeter firearm, loaded, chambered, and ready. He walked right up to her and then he shot her through the neck with a single round from not more than a couple feet away. She didn't make it into work that day or any other day after that. She took her final breaths right there in the parking lot at Dubot. And the defendant saw those last breaths and he took off. He shot her with that single round through the neck. He watched her grab her arm where the bullet came to rest inside her body, watched her collapse to the ground, watched her take her final breaths and left her there to die. Your Honor, a life sentence without release is what the legislature has determined is the appropriate sentence for one count of first degree murder with a single victim. In this case, 28-year-old Nicole Hammond, a vibrant young woman, lost forever. Her life snuffed out, cut way too short by the defendant. Nicole Hammond can't be brought back. Her life can't be brought back. Someone who can't come back from this, whose family and friends will have to go on without her. No more birthdays or Christmases or fishing trips with that. The defendant took all of that away. And as you heard from the family, no sentence can bring Nicole back but a life sentence for premeditated murder is what the law requires to hold the defendant accountable for his actions. And hopefully it will also bring some measure of closure to the victim's family. I want to thank the St. Cloud Police Department and the BCA for all of their work in investigating this case. There's no restitution being requested there's no fine that applies for count one, but the state asks the court to formally adjudicate and enter the conviction on count one and impose the statutorily required sentence for first degree premeditated murder, life without release. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Leone, do you wish to be heard? Thank you, Judge, just briefly. And Your Honor, I'm aware that the legislature does not give any leeway when it comes to count one in the sentence there. Um, count two, and this was addressed um, by Ms. Eldridge's letter to the court earlier in the week as well, and I concur with this. So as far as count two, Your Honor, I believe as a lesser included essentially of count one that there should be no sentence on that count. Um, again, we understand by statute, by legislature's policies, what count one will bring. Um, I believe Agent Cook's pre-sentence investigative report um, was conducted thoroughly. Um, it gives the court a background of a lot of different things, but um, in particular, Mr. Carpenter as well. So um, at this time, Your Honor, um, again, we ask that no sentence be issued or be ordered on count two. And count one, we understand what the legislative um, requirements are. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter, do you wish to say anything before sentencing today? <clears throat> Just a little bit, if that's all right. You may. Um, I guess one of the things I was kind of thinking about is just, um, you know, as they were, as I'm seeing these slides and hearing what her family had to say, she 
I agree that she was a really amazing person. She was really nice and um, very caring. Um, she was someone who would listen to to you if you had something going on. She was always concerned and, and caring and always appreciate that about about her. And, um, you know, it, it's... I, I tried to think of something I would want to say, but there's, like they said, there's no real words that can cover something like that, like losing someone like that. So all I can say is that I, I, I she was amazing and um, I appreciate you guys for making the, her the kind of person that she was. Michael Jordan Carpenter, you were found guilty by a jury of committing the offense of murder in the first degree, premeditated in violation of Minnesota statute 609.185 subdivision A1. The court hereby adjudicates a guilty of that offense and conviction will be entered accordingly. Pursuant to Minnesota statute 609.106, the court commits you to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for life imprisonment without possibility of release. The court imposes no fine. You will be required to submit a DNA sample as required by the Commissioner of Corrections. The sentencing order will reflect you have 698 days of custody credit as of today. The jury also found you guilty of the offense charge in count two, murder in the second degree. But as that offense is a lesser included offense of count one, the court will enter no conviction for that offense and impose no sentence. The sentence as pronounced will commence forthwith and the sheriff is ordered to convey you to the commissioner of corrections. Ms. Aldridge, is there anything else you wish to address today? No, Your Honor, thank you. Mr. Leone, anything else you wish to address today? No, sir, thank you. The hearing is concluded and court is adjourned. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter. Mr. Carpenter. All right.